Hi guys, it's Amy and you have found Amy Loves Crochet. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I really do appreciate it when you come to spend time with me. So whether you're a subscriber or this is the first time you're seeing me, thank you. I want to talk about uh, Big Twist Freelance Yarn today. Uh, when this yarn came out, I was quite excited because it's kind of weird. Who would think to put, you know, green and purple and maroon with this orange and white? <laughs> this is just odd. Um, but it's awesome. It's 100% premium acrylic. Um, I do like Big Twist yarn, if any of you have seen me talk about it before. Um, I've got some older Big Twist yarn here that is discontinued, and I'm waiting to use it up for something very specific. Um, so I came into the crochet world a little bit late and was finding these just discontinued. So when I saw that they were coming out with newer yarns, but they're just kind of white label, they're just kind of plain. Um, and again, this one, they're calling it premium acrylic. Premium acrylic. But what does that really mean? Isn't that like a, a perception? Like I think it's premium, but you just think it's so-so. Um, so I wanted to see how the colorway would play up. So I made a corner to corner and decided I was not going to do an entire blanket out of it. So I just made a bag. I just tried to kind of make two sides a little bit symmetrical. Um, sometimes the purple isn't really represented very much or the green is in very short supply on either of these. I think I started a new skein for both sides so that, or for each side, so that you would see how they would, how the color would play out. So not loving it. And one of my biggest complaints about it was that um, the white and orange is a lot thinner than the um, solid colors. Um, I don't know if I can, oh, here's one. Okay, so I, I made a couple of blankets that I'm gonna show you here today, but um, that bag I made a little while ago. But here's a good example of how these two colors, um, the white and orange is super thin or can get to be in super thin. It's just not the same size and you can feel it as you crochet. The maroon and the purple and the green are all thick like that and then that white, both the plain white, and, I mean the solid white and the white and orange variegated are thin like that. So I was not, like after I made that C2C bag, I was just like, wah, wah. and then I had, you know, I had purchased 10 skeins or 10 cakes. So I had a whole bunch more of it to go through. So what I have to show you today is from the stitch book. Where did I put it? Oh, it was right here a moment ago. Excuse me. Okay, so the two patterns that I made today, or that I have to show for you today, um, I really liked this one, so I'll show this one first because it's kind of, I thought that, um, you know, a lot of the um, stitches in this book are kind of lacy. You can see a lot of stuff has holes. Some of it, you know, is much more lacy than others. And I really wanted to um, have a solid base to be able, oh, there's a little peekaboo. <laughs> I guess I'll just show it to you now. Um, I wanted a solid base to play the colors out. And so I thought that this was a very good, good representation of this yarn. Um, you know, the, it wasn't annoying when the color changed. It worked right in. I don't feel like, you know, a lot of times when there's a color changing yarn, I am concerned with the way that the color is flowing. Like if it goes red, blue, white, red, blue, white, I want to keep going red, blue, white. But um, there, the colors in this one were just kind of sporadic. There was no rhyme or reason to how how long you had that color before the next color was introduced. So I was super stoked with this one. It is kind of just a little lap blanket. Uh, you know, this is a good size. It is touching the floor now and kind of goes right to my waist. So just the, a nice little lap blanket or, or a toddler blanket. You know, I, I like to intermix those terms because it's just about the same size. So I just hold it across my lap until I think that's a good size and go with it. Um, did I make a note on... I did not. I've got three wrappers here. So... I did really bad recently. Um, I was kind of starting, 
I did a couple of patterns and didn't like them and frogged them out and my journal was getting erased and rewritten and erased and rewritten and so I didn't get a couple of these um, blankets that I did written down I don't know what my chain count was and I apologize for that because that's exactly the information that I want to bring to you guys and so I kind of really failed you there but at least this is the way the colorway plays out um, if you've got cakes like this and you weren't sure what they were gonna look like this is what it looks like in this stitch I think it's a great stitch uh, it's just double crochets all the way through whether you do them together in groups of three or in a shell groups of three and then a shell so these are um, one two three four five in the shell and then you single crochet on top of the middle of the three doubles from the next row so it's kind of a standard pattern um, I did um, a blanket in the Ogo Blue Moon that was similar to this um, with the shells and then three doubles in the next row but I mean I say it's like music you, you there's only so many notes right there's only so many stitches so you can only you really put them together in so many different ways but so this was a great little pattern to work up it didn't take a lot of brain power it used I think a good amount of yarn it wasn't too lacy it wasn't too solid so um, yeah I would definitely make this again in either a solid or in a variegated and here we've got color changings and stripey variegated yarn and everything mixed all together so I thought that was a great one the other one I'm not too sure on I'm gonna stand by it because um, it's an interesting stitch that I never did before so I'm really happy about that it's kind of stepping outside of my my known not my comfort zone but just what I know um, and I you know I really kind of one of those where you read how to do the stitch and you're like okay and you're kind of working through it and it's a little bit awkward but now I'm just zooming right through it um, so let me show it to you here it's this shells and blocks so you've got those rows of chains and then that block that you work sideways right here um, and so that counts for three rows so it takes a hot minute to do that block but then the next two rows are just chain rows so it kind of works itself out and then in between you've got those V's it's you know nice little V stitch so here is where how mine turn is turning out um, it's kind of busy I've talked before about doing um, a really busy pattern with a very busy yarn sometimes you want a simple yarn you know a solid color if you're gonna do a kind of a crazy pattern or you can do a crazy pattern a crazy color yarn but then do a simple pattern so that you can appreciate you know this I, I don't know I don't know how I'm liking this um, let me see if I can hold this up like it's let me hold up over here like it and these don't lay flat the little blocks don't lay flat so what you do when you come to the end of your you know you do okay really I'm upside down again how do I do that I'm just picking it up to show you and 95.9% .9 of the time it's upside down Oy vey. okay so here's our V and we do chains and then connect so down here so from our V you do a chain of six and then you single crochet back and single crochet back again and then you anchor it down to here and then you do another row and then you're up here I don't know how to say it you kind of you know you create this block and then you anchor it and then you do another row and it then you're up here but then when you come back along see I should have ended on a block row so you can see it so as you come along here like with this next one here this maroon you come along and then you grab that block and do a single crochet into it so that um, it pulls you know it anchors the top of the block it's kind of it took me a minute to to get it going I'm not even gonna lie about that let me go to a different section the whites kind of hard to see so see we definitely have the chains and the blocks going you got your your V's over here and then your chains and then a block and then your V's so that V you know the V row column is all V's so that all stays together on top of each other but then the chains and the blocks I don't know 
I, I keep going with it and then I'm like, I like it, I don't like it, I like it, I don't like it. And they kind of curl, it doesn't lay flat. So I like it because it's weird, like me. But I'm kind of, you know, specific with my crochet. Like I'm, there's, I have some OCD traits with that. So this kind of wigs me out a little bit. But that's what I've got so far. I think that I'm two cakes in. And I have another three cakes and some pieces. So we'll see how long it gets. I, I don't know that it needs a border. It's got um, each of the rows ends with three double crochets. So that's a nice little edge all the way down. So I don't know. They kind of look like butterflies, I guess, to me. Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. What do you think? Kind of wacky. But I am super glad to be going through this yarn. I've had it, you know, after the C2C bag that I made, I was just like, I don't even know. But you just got to get in there and start working with it. And um, I like the way that it's turning out. So if you've got any of this, get in there. Use it. I think it's fantastic. Um, so still working on getting things set up for the vendor event. Um, I've made some changes to my tables a couple of times. Uh, so I was watching a video. I showed you guys where I bought some bases and a dowel and then this little half styrofoam ball to put on it so I could stand my hats up tall. And then I was watching a video from a very successful vendor event person and she was using candlesticks. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. Um, she had kind of a, she's one of those that I don't feel like I'm the same kind of crocheter because that's her business. And she buys little, and if, you, if this is you, I'm not trying to be offensive whatsoever. I'm just saying it's not me. And so I see it and recognize the contrast. So, you know, she's got pom-pom beanies selling for $40, 38 or $40. And I'm out there throwing mine on the table for 10 bucks, you know, different, different kind of people. But anyway, so she's saying how she's using, um, how cutesy and, um, what was her word? I don't think that, anyway, um, she looks cute. She looks nice. Like antique stores, like you go and you shop for your furniture that you need at your vendor event and stuff from an antique store. So she was using these great candlesticks and she goes, oh, and I know some people use a dowel and a styrofoam ball, but, and I, I just shuddered. I called my husband over and I go, okay, I can't do this. And he looked at the way that I had it set up already. And he goes, well, that looks great. Why are you, don't worry about it. I, I think it's better than the dowel hat idea anyway. So I'm going to take all that stuff back. So that's great. That's probably $25 or so worth of, you know, equipment that I'm buying to set up this event, vendor event. You know, I already bought the table space. I already, you know, am putting out tons of money to try to set myself up just to sell little things. So I don't know how things are going to work out. Um, I'm nervous about it, but I'm hopeful. So that that's going to take me far. You got to stay hopeful. You got to stay positive. I know that um, the demographic of the people that are going to come to this event are much closer to me than the ones, you know, they're not going to buy some $44 or $40 palm beanie. They're going to buy my $10 beanie. So um, that, those are the kinds of things that I'm trying to kick away the not negative thoughts, but, um, I, I am going to do, um, a positive job. I am going to look professional. I am going to feel confident and those things are going to carry, carry across, you know, that you're going to be able to tell as my client that, um, I'm proud of my work. This isn't just junk laying on the table. So ramble, 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 ramble as I do. Um, but that's all I've got for my video today. I wanted to just kind of Besides the big twist freelance, um, just kind of catch you up with where my headspace is on the vendor event. Thank you for sitting with me today. I really do appreciate your time. I'm so grateful and so thankful that this channel has been as successful as it is. And um, it's just all about fun and it's doing well. And that's just an added bonus. So thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate your presence with me every time I can feel you guys. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.